Animals and plants look quite different, but when we zoom into their cells, we can start to see some similarities. Today, we're going to look at their subcellular structures and compare them. Download your free study along workbook for this video and others in the cell biology topic. Just visit emmaditici.com for your free copy. We're going to start with animal cells and we'll look at the organelles that it contains and the functions of each. So the first organelle is called the nucleus. That's this big black blob. It controls the cell's activities. So basically everything. And it also contains genetic material, which in animal cells is DNA. On the outside of the cell is the cell membrane. This is responsible for controlling the passage of substances in and out of the cell. So that's things like glucose and water. Down here, we've got the cytoplasm. This is a liquid gel that fills up the entire cell and it's where chemical reactions occur. So make sure you learn chemical reactions happen there. This squiggly guy is a mitochondrion. That's the singular. And if you had a few of them, we'd call them mitochondria. That's the plural. Okay, their function is super important. They are where aerobic respiration occurs and that releases energy for the cell. So they're really important. Now we've got a little tiny black dot over here and we call this little guy a ribosome. You can also sometimes see the ribosomes attached to this structure and you'll learn more about this if you do A-level biology. But for now, just look for the little tiny black dots. Its function is protein synthesis, which is just a fancy way of saying making proteins. So these are all the parts you need to learn for an animal cell. Now let's look at a plant cell. I want you to pause the video and see which parts you can already label. You'll know some from what we've just covered. Ready? Okay, so the big black blob is the nucleus. That's the same in the animal cell. And we've also got the little tiny black blobs, which are the ribosomes. Over here, we have got the squiggly guy, which is a mitochondrion. And we've also got our liquid gel, which is the cytoplasm. Okay, we have got the cell membrane, and that is the inner layer of the two layers that you can see. And I'll go over how you remember that a little bit later. So now let's swap colors and we'll do the parts that are specific to plant cells. Starting with this green blob, this is a chloroplast. Now, not every plant cell has these, but when they do have it, their function is to contain chlorophyll, which is that green pigment that makes it look that way. And chlorophyll is really important because it absorbs light for photosynthesis. You're gonna do a lot more on photosynthesis later on in paper one. We've also got this big white blob, which is a permanent vacuole. Its function is to be filled with cell sap, and that's important because it helps keep the cell rigid. You'll notice that plants don't have skeletons, so they need this to help support them. And down here, we've got the outer layer, which is the cell wall. And my trick to remembering this is that the wall is always the outside layer of your house, and it's the same in a plant cell. It's on the outside. In plants, it's made of cellulose, but in fungi, it's made of a different material. Okay, and just like the wall of your house, it strengthens it and gives it support. So it's really vital. Also vital is that you learn the differences between plant and animal cells. Okay, it's time for some quick questions. Pause the video and try these questions before pressing play to go through the answers. Number one. Complete this table by putting a tick or cross in each box to show if the cell has each organelle. So we've got a human cheek cell, which is an animal cell, and a leaf palisade cell, which is a plant cell. So they both have got a cell membrane, but an animal cell doesn't have a cell wall, just the plant cell. They've both got mitochondrion and ribosomes, and only the plant cell would have a chloroplast. You could also have had a row asking you about a permanent vacuole, and that would have just been for the leaf palisade cell as well. Okay, two, state the function of A, ribosomes, and B, mitochondria. 
while ribosomes carry out protein synthesis or making proteins. And mitochondria are for aerobic respiration to release energy for the cell. It's really important that actually you got all of those words into your answer for mitochondria. And three, root hair cells are plant cells, but do not contain chloroplasts. Suggest so why. So let's start by thinking about what chloroplasts are for. Well, they contain chlorophyll, that green pigment, to absorb light for photosynthesis. But if you think about it, root hair cells are part of the root, so they're underground and therefore cannot actually absorb any light. So it's a waste of the plant's energy and materials to try and create chloroplasts. All right, how did you do on the questions? Animal and plant cells are both eukaryotic cells. In the next video, you'll find out what this means and compare them to prokaryotic cells. Click here to watch and don't forget to subscribe by clicking that button below. Thanks and bye.